I may have screwed up a tiny bit, but it's really repairable. So when I finished last episode, I started to assemble a few things, just put in, in place and see if everything turns out how I expected it to be. And there I realized a few things. Um, the most obvious one is the motherboard. Yeah, it, it doesn't fit anymore. Uh, this piece here is slightly too big for the motherboard to fit. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a problem. But it is fixable. It is fixable by using our old friend, the Dremel. I believe I can fix this by just like creating a little hole in this piece. I, I think that should, should solve the issue and the, the hole doesn't need to be too big. It's just for the SATA slot, a, a SATA slot height. Uh, but before I do that, I will do another thing because I stole these feet from my Intertech IM1 case uh, because I'm scratching my table all the freaking time so i thought yeah let's maybe just put a bunch of feet on top oh in the bottom hey, hey, hey stay here uh in the bottom so that it doesn't scratch anymore so let's just quickly put in the feet perfect and now we can finally stop scratching my table all the freaking time and it stands quite strong. So to solve the whole motherboard issue, we'll use the Dremel. And I just want to make sure that I don't screw it on the wrong side. Yeah, so so here just like a little, a little knob. Shouldn't be too hard. Oh, uh, you know what? Instead of breaking myself, the grinder should do a better job. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot how it look like when looks like when you break a Dremel grinder. I think I should buy some glasses at some point. That might be a good idea, but not today. Let's see if it already fits. That wasn't even close, but almost, almost. Let's put a new grinder on the tip. Let's have a quick look. Aha! It fits. Okay, let me just install the motherboard and we will get to the next issue. And that's quite the big one. Or uh, in other words, I did quite the oopsie. Okay, the motherboard is in. Everything looks fine. The case looks suspiciously like a Nouveau Borg, but that's a topic for another day. Where does the GPU go? Yeah, I, no joke, I completely forgot about the GPU. <laughs> Uh, that wasn't my smallest move, but everything is... Oh, I need to make sure that nothing gets into the socket. Oh, it was a stupid idea. But okay, I need now to figure out how to mount a GPU. Thankfully, I have some solutions. Uh, first off, choice. I am out of GT 710s, so no like ultra small, low profile, no uh, fan on the heatsink thing. That's unfortunate, but that's how it is. And the only viable option I had was a GTX 1650, the uh, Gainworld one with one single fan. My problem with that one is it, it is a bit too high for my taste given where I need the cooler to be. So uh, I was looking in the shelf and thankfully I found, where the hell did I put it? There. I found a Sapphire Radeon RX 6400. Now, I have never used this GPU. It is a brand new one that I got from Mr. X due to having alternative values for GPU benchmarks and that kind of stuff. But it's like, it's like an entry, entry, entry card and I just never got to use it in any of the bills. And it is perfect for this use case because take a look at how small that thing is. This is basically the, the SFF version that I was looking for. It does have a fan, but... Ugh. But that really doesn't matter in this case. And it's so low profile that the fan in the front won't really bother too much about this card, so this is perfect. Oh, and of course, we don't need any performance. This is supposed to be a display adapter. It's just the smallest display adapter that I have lying around, so therefore it's perfect. Now, about mounting this thing, I could theoretically just jam it in and call it a day. However, with moving the whole thing, you can see that the GPU does 
you know, move a tiny bit and I don't feel comfortable leaving it in there like that and then moving the case around. Whew, I was able to gather another one of these freaking octopuses, which isn't quite long enough for this use case. But give me a regular M4 screw. Does it go in the back? No, it does not. This is an issue. Okay, solution number two. So the cord using its SFF bracket or the, the shortened uh, PCIe bracket is long enough that I can use my little octopus here in combination with an alpha coal uh, radiator screw because they are so, the thread on them is so thin that it fits perfectly in here. And what I'm going to do is just hammer in another one of these in the bottom, of course, first, first measured so that it is in the right position. And then the GPU will be attached to the bottom, just like it, yeah, not necessarily be in the normal screw, but there are like, like benchmark cases that do it in a similar way. So from here, I just need to make a little mark there, and then we can get started. So let's clamp that one in there. And now I'm just going to have a little bit of an issue to security, securely clamp it down without destroying anything around it. I should have thought about this a lot sooner. Frick, will I clamp this one down? Is this here maybe long enough? Because I could hammer on it, but that would maybe even destroy something. Please be long enough. Yes. Come on, go in there. Okay, with that thing in, I, yeah, I need to reposition the motherboard, but I guess we can do that just like plus minus. And now with the GPU, click it in there like that. And all of these here are going in here. The GPU is going in. And now in between the GPU and this bracket. Oh yeah, look at that. And now the GPU is, after I tighten the screw, it is nice and tight in there. That came out wrong, but this works flawlessly. A lot, well, not a lot better, but I repaired the damage that I did myself, so. Okay, so everything or a lot is already finished at that point. The system is ready to be built, to be installed. We just have a few minor things that we need to do, like for example, cable passage for the CPU power and uh, for the 24 pin, because the GPU doesn't have any power, if I'm correct. Yeah, it doesn't. So that's fine, but it doesn't need to be like an enormous hole or like a beautiful hole. Or actually, you know what? Let's just do it right now quickly. I, I think because the 24 pin will be like here and the CPU power is here. So let's just drill a hole right there. Yeah, that should do it. We actually really do not need a lot of hole space. It's just because of the thickness of the 24 pin. That's the reason why the hole needs to be as big as it needs to be. It's annoying, but that's how it is. You know, normal people would use that special bracket that Dremel created. I think it was this one, where you like screw this in there and then you are sure that, or you can like, apply some pressure without it jumping around, which I just didn't do. So maybe let's correct that. Credit where credit is due. Using the bracket is really a lot easier. Does a 24 pin already fit through that? Yeah, I think not. Yeah, no, we should be fine. Yeah, let's just try the 24 pin. Yeah, that, that goes through without an issue. I have one more thing because in my garage, I found this totally random button. And I do believe that we kind of need a button. Or I don't want to like shorten out the pins every goddamn time that I started. So let's install this button somewhere. Because this button has like four different pins and I'm not sure uh, which one of them does what exactly. And I'm not sure if this is like a button that like does release or like you know, you have buttons that you you press and then it's during pressing the electricity flows through or you have buttons where as long as you you press it once then it flows and you press it again and it stops flowing and I need to find out which one of the two it is. I guess the first one, but I just need to find out so I will shorten the power supply uh, just to quickly find out.
these two electricity in electricity out if i press it it uh, lets it throw through for a second or for as long as i press the button hence i can use this one as a very regular power button so let's give it a place somewhere and i think the most obvious position would be like just flat out in the top here makes like the most amount of sense i'm just not completely sure if my biggest drill is big enough for this one yeah no i will need to you know like like fiddle it a bit uh, to make this one go through there oh yeah and we got ourselves a beautiful little stop button okay so for today this is going to be it i am now going to clean all of this mess up a bit here and then for the next time we can finally start building that goddamn pc and slap everything in there we are really almost done finally and once the pc is ready we will uh create those panels uh that are going to be mounted onto these things here so we are very very close to to be finished no, this is actually not the smartest idea. Okay, so let's quickly prepare the first panel, or just like the mounting holes for it, uh, in order to be sure that I don't like destroy anything uh, later on, because I really don't want to do that. It's actually enough if I just create the mounting hole, nothing else. So this is going to be the panel or where it's going to be later on. I just need to drill four holes from both sides to later on install these things and then it's okay for today. And on the other side exactly the same procedure. One hour later. Okay, now all of the holes are drilled. So for today this is going to be it. I'm going to clean up all of this mess, clean up a few things here, you know, sand a few things down. And then for the next time, we're going to build the goddamn PC, put it in there, and prepare the first panel by drilling the round hole in it for the first fan. But for today, this is going to be finally it. I'm, I'm really done for today. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will stay with us for the next episode. And then the one after that, we are going to test a benchmark, the very first fan, finally. So hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.